Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to make my beef and cabbage stew. Now it's really simple. All you want to do the first thing when you start cutting your vegetables. So here's some red potatoes. Now I use the red potatoes because they are waxier so they hold up better to long cooking process. They don't fall apart. I like to cut them a little big because I want something to bite into. So this is a really fast and easy step. And you get your carrots. You cut the tip off and the back part to get that little root out and I cut them at an angle just because it looks nice it's, it doesn't really add anything to it and I'm not really too worried about the uniformity of it all because they'll be cooked all the way through anyway because it's a real long cooking process and just cut them up nicely and you can use as many as you think you might need more or less it's up to you Get your cabbage. I just cut it in half because it was a little too big, and I, you know, I need mean, half of it and shred it. It's a pretty quick process shredding cabbage. Now I do try to keep out most of the root because you don't want that in there because you know it's not the most appetizing. And you get some a half a cup of flour, pour in a bowl. Get your meat, and you want to coat the meat in flour. Now, I do buy the pre-cut stew meat from the store just because it's easier that way. Now the reason you want to coat the meat in flour before you brown it is because the flour will help thicken up the broth and you don't want that raw taste of flour in there because it's not very appetizing. So you don't want to skip this step. Well, you don't really have to if you don't want to do it but I always do it because it's worth it. You know, Just make sure it's evenly coated as much as possible. It doesn't have to be perfect. And once it's all coated, take out your pot. I'm using an electric pressure cooker because it's easier to, it doesn't take as long to cook the stew that way. It's only 45 minutes in total in cook time. So I like it. The only problem though is trying to brown meat in the pressure cooker, there's not a lot of space. So it's kind of hard to maneuver it and you have to do it in a lot of stages so it takes a bit while. But you just want to get it brown nice and seared. You don't have to worry about cooking it all the way through. So yeah, as you can see I'm having some difficulty trying to spin it all around. It's like fighting me. It's just space wise. Now you can do this in a slow cooker, it just takes longer. You have to use a pan to brown the meat and you want to try to deglaze the pan to get all the brown bits and the juices in there. Because you don't want to lose that, that's a lot of flavor. But just keep trying to brown it and spin it around. It doesn't really have to be perfect because it will finish cooking in the stew. Now the spices and herbs I use aren't really written down for me. I don't have a exact recipe. I just happen to use whatever I have on hand. I mainly use herbs. Because the, the main spice I use is a star of anise, and that adds the main flavor of the stew. And that's still really the only one I have that I, I constantly use. It is a bit expensive, but it's worth it because the flavor is good and it doesn't overpower the other flavors. Like you still taste the meat, the potatoes, the carrots, and the cabbage, but you still have that little taste of anise into it too. Which is really good. And the other herbs, especially you add, are mainly just for aromatics. You know, it gives you the smell. You don't really taste them that much, so you can use whatever herbs, spices you want. But I do recommend you use star of anise because it's a really good spice. And 
them, you see they're browning up nicely. You see the little brown bits sticking to the bottom of the pan, and that's, that's what you want. Since this is non-stick, it doesn't really, you know, leave a lot of bits, so... Yeah, this part is a bit time-consumed, just because of the size of the pot. It takes a while. And now once everything's all brown, you want to take your in your vegetables to the pot. I put the potatoes in on the bottom because they're the hardest and they take longest to cook. And the meat right in the middle and the carrots on top. And pour in the water. I probably added a little too much water, but it's fine. I just filled it up to the max fill line. And you add your herbs. As you see, there's a star of anise sitting right on top of the little pot. Close it up and set it for 30 minutes. And when 30 minutes are done, you release the pressure. Now this part is kind of dangerous, so you want to watch it. That's why I use the thongs to make sure I'm a safe distance away from it. And you just want to watch that little red dot on the handle. Once that pops down, it's going to be safe to reopen the lid. Just take a minute or two. So pop down and open up and there you go. And add your cabbage. It just barely fits, but it will cook down and you know, add more, more space. And now I'm trying to fish out the pod to make it sure it's on top. But you don't want to leave that in there when everything's done. You want to take it out. It's set for 15 minutes. And then once that's done, you release the pressure again. And you'll have yourself a beef and cabbage stew. Now I do hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you enjoyed the stew, it is really good. Yeah, this part takes a while. And here it is, fish out the pod. Go. Now you get, just give it a stir, make sure everything's all mixed in. Voila! Potato, carrot, cabbage, and beef stew.